Hello, my little students. Welcome to this new class. My name is Juan Contreras, and today we're going to learn about a communicative framework for teaching pronunciation, a topic that helps teachers and students. And you may be asking, why? Because this topic teach, oh well, helps teachers to teach pronunciation in a better way so that students can acquire a high level of English pronunciation, okay? So if you want to come here with me and learn about this, let's go and follow me, okay? First, let's talk about the definition of this topic. This is a framework for the sequence of activities used when we are teaching pronunciation, okay? In case you don't know, a framework is a structure that underlies a system. So we should consider this whole thing as a system that teachers imply so the students can reach a better English pronunciation, okay? This framework contains some activities or methods to explain English pronunciation that we have here right now, and we're going to explain it, okay? So let's go, guys. Let's start with the first stage of this framework, which is description and analysis, okay? This is about oral and written illustration of how the feature is produced and when it occurs within spoken discourse, okay? In this part, the teachers presents a feature and the rules of occurrence either inductively or deductively. Okay, what does this mean? Okay, we can use all the materials available like charts, guides, and other things. For example, in this presentation, I have two very useful charts to use when we are teaching pronunciation, okay? In, in this case, I have the vowel chart with some words as example on each and every vowel, and the other chart which speaks about the regular simple past ed endings, which is it and do. Okay? Material like this is what this stage is about. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the stage number two, which is listening discrimination. Okay? Listening discrimination is focused listening practice with feedback on learners' ability to correctly discriminate the feature. When we are doing a listening discrimination, we need to use contextualized activities where students must pay attention carefully to what they hear, okay? One very common example is when we are teaching minimal pairs because the difference between words is in only one sound, okay? So look at this picture. We have this teacher teaching this topic and she says, he wants to buy my boat, okay? So the students must know the difference between boat or boat so they can hear the correct word, okay? And that is when we are doing a listening discrimination, okay? A very common activity in English and helpful for students. Let's go to the next one. The third station is the controlled practice. The controlled practice is very used in oral reading of minimal pair words, sentences, or short dialogues with special attention paid to the highlighted feature to raise learners' consciousness. In these activities, the learner's attention should be almost completely on form. Any kind of coded reading can work if the learner's attention is clearly focused on the target feature, okay? For example, we have this tongue twister called She Sells Seashells, where the focus is on the s and sh sound, okay? and could work as well as the other tongue twister and poems, rhymes, where the texts are focused 
on something, whether it will be the pronunciation of a word or the sound. Okay, this is very helpful to use in this stage. Okay, now come with me and let's go to the stage number four. Okay. Four station, guided practice. This is structured communication exercises, such as information gap activities or cute dialogues that enable the learner to monitor the specific feature. In guided practice, the learner now begins to focus on other things like meaning, grammar, and communication, as well as pronunciation. Teachers need to develop a continuum of reading activities which shift attention gradually to a new cognitive task while the learners attempt to maintain control of the pronunciation target. So what do we do in this stage? Put grammar, meaning or other skills as a complement or for the pronunciation. So the student can put in practice this as in this example that we have right here. Did you work last night? Yes, I worked until 11 p.m. What do you do? I fixed my computer and prepare my report, okay? Last one. Last but not least, communicative practice, okay? This is less structured, fluency building activities that require the learner to attend to both form and content of utterance, okay? At this stage, activities strike a balance between form and meaning. And even in this stage, with all this that we're saying, the learner's attention should still be focused on the pronunciation of the target feature, okay? Remember that all this is a process. So the student in this stage, the stage number five, must put in practice all that they learn in the other four stages, okay? And what a better way to do it in activities like role plays, interviews, and other like these, where the student is free to talk like they want, and you can speak with them and communicate, okay? That's the better way. So that was all the class, guys. I hope you like it. I hope you learn as much as I learned doing this presentation. And if you like my videos, subscribe and I will check it, okay? See you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye-bye.